हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द ऑनलाइन प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ माध्यम आई एफ आई एम रवि त्रिपाठी करंट अफेयर फैकल्टी इन द माध्यम आई एफ टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द टूडे इम्पॉर्टेंट एडिटोरियल टॉपिक सो लेट स्टार्ट दिस इज द एडिटोरियल ऑफ द हिंदू दिस एडिटोरियल इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज ऑफ द दिस इज रिलेटेड टू द क्राइसिस इन द इंटरनेशनल लॉ यू कैन सी इंटरनेशनल लॉ एंड organizations also international organizations such as if you talk about the major organization united nation this article talks about the failure of the international law or international organization in solving the dispute of the nations between the nations okay international what is the purpose of international law international organization to sort out the dispute or redress the uh, complaints of the uh, countries at the international level okay so this Editorial related to that international law is not fulfilling its objective. International organization is not fulfilling its objective. It also taken many examples such as United Nations. United Nations. This is the international body formed in 1945 after the Second World War. Prior to it, there was one more body known as the League of Nations. Okay, so United Nations is the successor body of the League of Nations. League of Nations was created after World War One to prevent the any further World War in future. But what happened? Only after 20 years, World War Second started in 1939. Okay, so this League was dismantled and United Nations was created as a strong body. The purpose was to prevent any kind of the future World War or any kind of the dispute between the countries, so that. there can be sustain or there in the world it the, the world can live with the harmony okay peace so their prosperity comes prosperity may come in the uh, uh, world uh, by the united nations effort but united nation somehow it managed to prevent the world war situation even after formation of united nation immediately formation of united nation it faced the crisis of israel palestine issue which is still not uh, solved by the united nation which uh, it also faced many crises uh, the major crisis was the cold war cold war but it uh, cold war not converted in the full fledged war but yes it was a tension but united nation was not able to solve this problem also later on if we talk about the recent example then russia's aggression on the ukraine okay you can say the russia ukraine war is the major concern united nation is not able to prevent the war what it can do united nation form with the uh, some permanent and non permanent member and permanent member got the veto power russia is one of them us is one of them uk is one of them china is one of them okay so in russia's aggression on the uh, ukraine there was uh, resolution the united nation but russia vetoed the united nation so Uh, united nation resolution so the permanent member has the power to veto the the kind of resolution against them or against their supportive nation so this is the main reason the united nation is become almost non functional what happened with wto is also the major concern who you all know that covid i don't think no one on the earth is unaware from this Uh, pandemic of the covid covid 19 virus okay what it did it destroyed the whole economy whole uh, structure of the global uh, global whole structure of the world okay so it structure the dismantled the global structure covid 19 originated in china but who was not able to identify at initial stage and not able to uh, uh, alarm the other nations to prevent the catastrophe so this it was the failure of the who what happened after that when the covid pandemic spread globally when the covid pa pandemic spread group globally then what happened that whole countries all the countries started uh, the work uh, the global structure or globalization system collapse almost collapse whole countries was focusing for over their own citizens they were not supporting the other countries so wto they imposing also they also impose certain barriers on the trade and import also so 
WTA World Trade Organization, which is uh, created for the facilitation of this kind of activity, also failed. Okay, IMF International Monetary Fund is for maintenance of the balance of payment. Also, have uh, developed country have the major share in the IMF. So, this is the article focusing that or uh, making uh, pointing out that international law are has failed but not succeeded because of some reasons. So it's related to the failure of the international bodies or laws. Okay. Such as I have given example, Russia-Ukraine war, COVID crisis, United Nations Charter has succeeded in ensuring the world war, preventing world war. So uh, world war has not been happened after United Nations formation, but uh, many uh, uh, countries encroach over the sovereign country, attacked over the sovereign country, US is the major country who attacked not only the Iran, Afghanistan, but also in many countries, uh, US has its interest, it uh, sent its army, NATO, NATO was an organization formed during the Cold War, also they uh, have aggression in many countries, okay. So, what it said, this article said that, uh, no fight against World War, but interstate war, not prevented by the United Nations, so that the uh, purpose of United Nations to secure the harmony and peace has not been succeeded, okay. Just because of the Russia's ongoing illegal war, but due to several other factors that will play out in the next 12 months beyond, okay. So what is the matter that this time Russia is in the war with the Ukraine, okay. So in coming year, in coming one year, this is the start of the new year, beginning of the new year. So in the coming new year, we will see the major consequences of this war. This war is not going to be end. Russia only halted for the uh, Christmas function, the ceasefire for the Christmas function, but not this war is not end. And there is are many aggression by the China. Uh, there is there may arise dispute of the neighbor countries with the China. There may uh, dispute arise. There is a uh, many countries in the African region which is in uh, uh, in in the war situation. Okay. So, this how United Nations can prevent this kind of activity will be challenged for this international body or will be challenged for the international organizations. What are the purpose? What are the challenges? Why these institutions are not able to fulfill its objective? Why international law failed? First thing is that international law do not have their uh, legal enforcement properly. Okay, there is, they can impose sanctions, suppose uh, United Nations has imposed sanctions over the Russia, US has imposed sanctions, most of the organizations have imposed sanctions, but it doesn't prevent Russia, it doesn't hinder Russia from uh, aggression over the Ukraine, okay. So the word post World War II was bipolar, as I told you that bipolar divided into two sides, one side was Russia, second side are USSR, okay, but USSR declined that uh, you, uh, capitalist economy and so Soviet Union, socialist economy. But after disintegration of the UIA, USSR, for 30 years or 20, 30 years, we can say there were relative harmony. Not complete harmony, but most of the country were in harmony. So, this is considered the relative harmony period. But after that, but after that, even during that period, NATO bombed Kosovo. This was a dispute in the Yugoslavia region. Not NATO interference and bomb bombard Kosovo. Uh, US also invaded Iraq, Western countries, UN Charter, and disregarded the UN Charter. UN Charter related to the peace and harmony. So US uh, generally takes aggression over the countries, and this uh, doesn't respect the international law and institution, institution. At the time of the Donald Trump, he withdrew most of the international organization. Okay, because he thought that his belief that American first policy should be considered by him, but international law are creating hindrances in between, okay. So, though most of the organization is not, even the Ralph Weld argues that US led military action did not attract as the vociferous international response as Russia invasion of Ukraine did, okay. So, most of the western countries uh, represented to represent themselves that they are not violating the rights, they are only attacking for the general purpose, okay. So, this is the, this is the uh, kind of views that making a situation uh, in the uh, globally so that international laws are not being followed properly by the nation. The relative harmony 
based on the spread of democracy great acceptance of the universal human right these are the purpose for which united nation has been created to prevent the universal human right global consensus maintain international rules of law multilateral institutions independent international courts such as international criminal court international court of justice but yes these courts also have their limitation suppose international criminal court america is not uh, party in the international criminal court it, it doesn't believe that international criminal court has right over the america even international court of justice cannot enforce its judgment over any country what it did united nation it it can uh, communicate the united nation and united nation has power to sanction or any kind of uh, uh, can take action any kind of so it doesn't have any enforcement such as court international court also fails because they do not have any kind of enforcement however these universal values such as the human right democracy uh, economic uh, harmony these kind of rights are under threat we have entered in the multipolar world involving the securitization of the international law okay example suppose for the security purpose most of the countries taking aggression most of the countries showing aggression over the uh, another country because of the security purpose so securitization or securing their country became the important for the country important for that country and this is the reason that they are they came in the conflict with the other countries most of the time okay so today's international law face a new ground reality the dwindling of the liberal and capitalist west and the rise of the autocratic china and expansionist russia okay so capitalist and liberal democracy even us is the capitalist economy following the capitalist structure but it is liberal in nature okay so uh, the today we can say that autocratic china and expansionist russia china became autocratic it takes decision by itself it also uh, have expansionist policy china also follow expansionist policy russia's aggression over the ukraine crimea is also showing that russia is also following the aggression uh, uh, expansionist policy so they are uh, uh, encroaching or attacking over their neighbor country, neighbors okay so this is not good for any uh, country and it is dismantling not only the uh, peace global peace but also the economical structure of the uh, economic structure global, globally because in today's world one country is dependent over the another country for its raw material for its import export uh, uh, for employment etc remittance etc so disturbance in one region or one country create disturbance in other, in other region another country as you can see that after russia ukraine crisis the world is moving towards the recession world is moving towards the recession inflation there is situation of inflation because most of the uh, supply crude oil supply most of the gas supply uh, and other food item supply food grain supply comes from these region such as the edible oil supply prevented hinder, hindered by the this war so it created the inflation like situation so if international institution are not able to prevent these kind of activities so uh, th these kind of wars so the global world will collapse the global structure will collapse and no country will follow the international institution if they are not uh, working for the welfare of all nations okay so russia believe that the basis of international law is not universal but cultural and civilization distinction this view is this view in a complete violation of the united nation charter russia believe that as i told you international law some countries believe is not in the welfare of all countries they are selective in nature they are working for the selective countries so this kind of belief is also hinder hindering the uh, uh, preventing the countries for following the international law one more thing that economic lawless economic protectionism suppose most of the countries are imposing ban strict uh, strict uh, import restriction imposing the import restriction for other countries this is what is known as the economic warfare uh, suppose china imposed some restriction on the uh, import from the us us impose uh, hard restriction over the chinese product india uh, uh, ban some ch chinese mobile applications china also imposed some kind of restriction on india so this is the economic protectionism to protect our economy 
to protect our to promote our economic structure we uh, make the strict provision for import or export or other economic activity this reflect inflation reduction act in us which provides the subsidies okay which provide the subsidies industry massive industrial subsidy to domestic american companies at the cost of import and foreign companies so if the subsidies will be provided to the domestic manufacturer or domestic activity the importer will not in importer will not able to compete with them in that market and they will not compete and they will not survive in that market so this kind of act also making the economic protectionism and international belief uh, over the institution like wto which need to protect the international trade and break the economic protectionism barrier is failure of this organization okay so uh, most of the countries are in belief that wto is not working properly and well welfare working for the welfare of some other nations okay now us has vehemently rejected the recent world trade organizations panel report that had the us protectionism industrial policies masquerading the national security objective illegal okay so as I told you that United Nation is not following or not uh, respecting the United WTO's objectives. US has also strangled the WTO's effective dispute settlement mechanism by recently by uh, by relentlessly blocking the appointment of appellate body member. Okay, so it is in sense you can say that United Nation, uh, United States. United States and other developed countries are hindering the dub body international body to deliver effectively not in this uh, WTO sense this is dispute redressal mechanism related to the dispute mechanism uh, redressal mechanism United States is blocking that that dispute redressal mechanism to be a very effective okay so most of the developed countries are not letting the development institutions or international institutions work properly and institutions are also some somehow are not working properly or you can say working in the welfare of that nation because that nation has the major say major voting right major funding for these institutions and economic power is the major power next is the populist challenge populist challenge means some government believe that international laws can impact or uh, have negative impact over its uh, population so they can their population can be prevented and can be served omit only by the domestic law okay so they don't believe that international law can serve the purpose of their domestic purpose so that they are not following suppose populist attack the legitimacy of international law and refer to it as the foreign law which is inimitable to their national interest okay it is not able to fulfill its national interest so they are against it such as the hungary turkey poland israel these countries believe that their people or their citizen demand can only be fulfilled their needs can only be fulfilled by the uh, these countries only and no or international law only create chaos only hindered its development uh, their uh, domestic developments okay so they attack the international institutions court for uh, international institution international court for thwarting them from pursuing the international interest of the pure people pure people means the people of that country so it said that as i told you that international institutions and international organizations laws cannot fulfill they only pretend that they are serving the interest of the pure people but exactly they are not these country believe that only this country can fulfill the objective of our people their people ethnic identity and they can also protect the culture and ethics of that country so how to address this crisis how these institution, international institutions can work in the welfare of the uh, other nations also and other nations should why other nations should follow these international institutions first is that crisis in the international law will exist if the phenomena of imperialism is not addressed what is the imperialism? Imperialism is attacking or expansionist policy, attacking nearby or small countries, the small territories, and capturing them and expansion and making their countries expansion. So, if this kind of phenomena, such as Russia's attack on Crimea, Russia's attack on Ukraine, 
China, Taiwan. If this kind of activity will not be prevented by the international institutions, then these international institutions will become meaningless. So, this kind of uh, uh, thinking should be removed from the mind of the countries and it can be done only by the strict international law and strict international implementation of the law. Okay. So, this is the uh, another point to crisis. This crisis occurs in international law because of the absence of any constitutional order other than constitutional order of states. Okay. So, st yes, states have their constitutional mandate. They have their uh, force to impose that uh, order, their uh, laws and their orders. But international court, international law do not have any kind of force. So, no constitutional mandate of international law to be followed. They are, they are not mandatory for the nations. Most of the laws are not mandatory for the nations, not uh, forcefully can be applied over the nations. Okay. So, this international law should be included in the constitutional order. There should be a constitutional order. So, all countries should follow them. Like our country's constitution we are following, we should also follow the international constitutional order. Okay. To make international law effective, it is needed to address securitization, populism and protectionism on the four universal value that is international law enshrined. As I explained earlier, what is the populism, protectionism and securitization. So, all these issues should be addressed. This kind of issue should be addressed by the law. So, the law should be balanced in nature so that it can fulfill the objective of the international laws, purpose of the international laws. And the major thing or last thing is that implementation, enforcement you can say. Enforcement is necessary. This is the only part of any law to become it to any law to become effective. Okay. So, enforcement and implementation is the uh, min, should be uh, there should be a process of enforcement of any law to make it effective. Okay. So, these are the issues that international law should international law or international lobby major countries should address carefully so that international law or international uh, institution have is relevant. Okay. Now, come to the next article. Political parties are not like companies. This article mentioned that there is some notion that political parties are working as a corporate company. Okay. There are some news, there are some news that most of the political parties are corporates in nature. They are working as the corporate culture. They have their hierarchy. They are working, they have their employees working as a salesman of the party. So, this is the article that said that there is much difference between the political parties and the corporate entity because political parties purpose is different from the uh, corporate entities. Corporate what they did, they sell their goods or services to the public for welfare of that corporation. What political party did, they serve the nation, they represent the whole country, they make the law not only for the people but all for the corporations also. They not work on profit basis. Their motto is not to earn profit. Their motto is to serve people, to make people friendly policy, to make sure the implementation of the policy, to fulfill the welfare objects, to help the people in the, uh, at any kind of disaster, any kind of situation such as in COVID-19. We take example, if we take example that not corporate entities, not corporate companies provided free ration to the uh, whole nation, but yes, political party in power provided the food to the needy people, provided the vaccine, free vaccination to all the citizens of India. Okay. So, these kind of activities can only done by the political parties. And even if political party is in opposition, not in power, they also serve the purpose of society. They are not working for profit. Yes, they can take, they can influence the uh, citizen for the election purpose only. They want to come in power only and after then their purpose is serve the nation. They can, they are under the bracket of the constitution. They cannot go out of this bracket. If they go, if they go out, there is a division of power in India. There is strict, uh, the courts have strict regulation over these, uh, the, any kind of laws which violate the basic structure of the constitution. So, though all political parties or political leaders represents the nation, represents their 
people their constituency so what they did they not only they are not salesman they are not uh, only service provider but for the welfare of the people so they re, they are representative of the people corporates or companies are not representative of the people employee ceo of the company is not the representation of the people he is not representing the people he is for the profit of company only this article shows that yes some culture in the political parties now some culture uh, you can say that they are related to the corporations but these are not corporations the popular the popular trope among uh, po political commentator especially in the aftermath of important election is that political parties are like corporation and their leader like ceos so this is the article but this article also said that this is not true the analog is made to press home the point that just as CEO are held as the accountable for the bad quarter, so should the leader of the political parties for the poor election result. This is the notion. Most of the news uh, news channels run the story that if any election, if in, in any election, any political politically defeated by the another party, so that uh, state uh, state's election representative or the leader of election, you can say be responsible for the failure of the election and most of the time political party takes action over it so by this by considering this some people said that the political parties are working like the corporate if any employee is not uh, achieving its target then what companies did they fire the employee or they dig they change the uh, work profile of the employee so some political party is also doing this so some people said that they are working like a corporate but it is not true even political parties if any representative of political party suppose if any one leading the political party in any state and political party got defeated so they are the representative of the people people by itself elect elect or select the their leader by their work not by their influence, not influenced by the another personality. They they select or constitution provide them to elect the people. So they are the representative of the people. So people have their will to change the government, to elect anyone, to select anyone, even after major influence, economical influence, political influence. Uh, but they uh, they select the part, uh, leader by itself, and not most of the time that. Uh, the leader of the state has responsibility to win the election. Yes, they have their says, they have their followings, but they are not responsible for the failure of the party. Who are responsible? Only representative of the particular constituency. If suppose I am not working in my constituency and I make responsible for X person for the failure of the Uttar Pradesh election or for my election, this is my fault, not this is the leader's fault. Okay. Yes, advertisement. Some corporate culture has also inculcated in the political parties that advertisement structure, social media promotion, uh, hierarchy, they also adopted the hierarchy. But yes, most of the employees in the political party are voluntary in nature. But in corporations, the voluntarism is limited. There is most of them, there are most of the employees serving on the salary basis or the profit basis, partner on the profit basis. But political parties, the volunteers serve the political parties. Political parties not running their businesses. They have the uh, source of income by the donation. So, what corporate gets, they earn their profit from their business. Okay. So, this is not true that political parties are working as the uh, corporate. These are the differences as I told you before. Political parties have claimed that volunteers, most of the volunteers, the while, while company has employees. Decision making aspect and operations such as uh, in uh, company there is a script the employee has a script to fulfill its objective to, uh, to complete its sale or services sales of goods and services but in political party it is not true there is some kind of decision making involved uh, at the bottom level also the purpose of political party is capture state power service in some state socio agenda okay as i told you before the, legit, uh, the legitimize this aspiration, the party itself must be seen as the micro uh, microcosm. Microcosm means below the level, means grassroots level, you can say. Okay, to attach to the society, you can say grassroots level. Okay, so 
there is a much differences as i told you before most private companies operate in the narrowly defined and a political space selling goods and services but not the political parties selling the goods and services corporation is entity staffed by the paid employees as i, I dealt in here that political parties most of the employees are voluntary in nature some may be the paid employees but most of the employees are voluntary in nature hence it is evident that analogy of the political parties as company makes little sense or you can say makes no sense okay these are the differences given when internal fluctuation party of political comes out in the public it has a cascading effect suppose if any salesman did any wrong to any citizen or any people any person so what it will not hamper the complete uh, ideology of a party uh, of a corporation it not hamper the complete it not collapse the com uh, complete system of a corporation but if a representative of the party said anything wrong suppose the two days uh, four days before a minister said anything or a representative of the political party said anything socially then it creates the lot of damage to the reputation of the political party okay so this is the one difference political party could sort out these issues through the discipline me not making any kind of uh, any kind of anti social statements unlike employees political functionaries cannot be fired especially many have not have their post uh, begin they are not functioning properly but political party cannot fire their employees because they comes with their represent they are representative of some people and political party can only take some limited decision and firing uh, political leader creates a huge difference or huge changes in the structure of the political parties or power of the political parties hence corporation notion of hierarchy at i told you compartment professionalism discipline accountability do not translate will within the political party so hierarchical structure do not uh, uh, completely converts in the hierarchical structure okay in political party so you can say that political parties are not the corporation but why this notion has been raised because re by recent trend some said the corporations and professionalism of political parties political parties are also following some kind of uh, corporation and professionalism i have told you in advertisement they also uh, cre uh, create some employment em employees for the advertisement grassroots level so these kind of hierarchy structure they are developing corporation structure professionalism structure they are developing so people are saying that political parties are corporates in nature okay starting to prune political judgment from various positions such as in case of the spokesperson spokes is is, is if a spokesperson said anything political party remove the spokesperson again the political party if not uh, able to represent his view uh, properly then political party remove the spokesperson it can also remove the other party members also so change their position so this can be said that they are working as a professional body they are not letting them express their view properly anti defection bill divert the political parties it means if there is a whip in the political party no person can vote against the will of the uh, political party they must uh, uh, work according to the must vote according to the uh, will or whip so there is no freedom of thought and expression uh, they can also impose the anti defection bill means there is no freedom to switch to another political party also chief minister using the bureaucracy to bypass the political leader or most of the political leader or minister so this is can say the structure of hierarchy is changing in the political party so these are the some regions uh, political discretion is uh, being curtailed as i told you so these are the reason for this purpose for the purpose most of the people said the political parties are working as the corporate but as i told you before that their motto are different political parties purpose is different and corporations purpose is different there is no where similarity in the corporation and political parties okay so this is wrong that political parties is working accordingly way forward ultimately politics is the value driven enterprises so you cannot say that political party are the corporation and we see they compete and accountability from the political functionaries but the way forward is not enough through the corporation of the parties our parties means we cannot bypass we should not bypass we should not work the corp like the corporate to bypass the authority we should provide them the proper decision making authority okay next is the janta election this is the 
election announced by the Myanmar military. Myanmar military. Okay. What happened in Myanmar? Even uh, Myanmar democratic election held in 2022, December 2022. And prior to the formation of the government in February 2021, there were coup in the Myanmar. Myanmar. What is coup? The term coup refers if there is a forceful, forceful snatching of the power from a democratic government or a government by any organization. Here, the uh, most of the in most of the countries by the army is known as the coup. Suppose the National League of Democracy won the election in 2022. Okay, Aung San Suu Kyi was its leader, and at the day of his oath, the army coup, army taken power from the democracy democratic government by alleging that that this democratic government is not serving the purpose of democracy and they won the election from by the fraudulent mean okay then Aung San Suu Kyi sent in the prison by the army and since then army is running the Myanmar the, the Myanmar country okay the government in Myanmar this even Myanmar has the army rule even from the beginning 1948 Myanmar got its independence and since 1962, you can say there is army rule in the, in the Myanmar and 2002-2008, Myanmar make the constitution, Myanmar or oh, military of Myanmar, military Myanmar form a constitution for the democratic election. So, you can understand that military government, military government can not effectively form a democratic uh, constitution okay what they did they provided that according to 2008 elections should be held in the Myanmar and 25 percent seats 25 percent all seats reserved for the military purpose in the Myanmar okay so there is 25 percent seats and important ministries for the military or army personnel in the Myanmar so this is not complete democratic constitution but yes this uh, this initiated the process of democratization of the Myanmar. The, under this 2008 uh, constitution election held in Myanmar and Aung San Suu Kyi's party National League of Democracy won the election. Army was backing to another party, opposition member. So when uh, Aung San Suu Kyi won the election, army took over the force, took over the charge, took over the government forcefully and sent Aung San Suu Kyi in the prison by alleging that. Uh, see use the fraudulent mean to win the election okay since then uh, since then uh, there is uh, military rule in the Myanmar okay Myanmar constitution said that there's uh, there should be election in the Myanmar should, uh, election should be Myanmar in two year within two year within uh, we two year how by If there is no democratic government in the Myanmar, the 2008 constitution said that there should be an election of the government after one year and it can be extended by two times, six months in one time. Okay, so for two years or every two year, there should be the election mandatory if there is no democratic government or uh, government is under the military rule or president rule then there should be uh, election within two years okay so first of february is approaching so myanmar has announced that they will uh, organize the election but these elections are not free and fair are these elections free and fair this is the question raised by the myanmar people also and globally why because these elections are held by the army. Army is controlling the most of the institution. Most of the political leader opposing the army rule are in the jail. Even the Aung San Suu Kyi, the leader of the opposition party or the winner of the last election is also in the jail. So these are the issues that have been raised by the people of the Myanmar also. 
and also the Indian government and globally that free and fair election, if Myanmar want free and fair election, then all political prisoners should be removed, should be released, sorry, all political prisoners should be released so that the free and fair election can be conducted. Most of the people, most of the voter in the fear that if they vote against the will of the army, army can again take the power from the elected government. So, there is the most of the issues, there are most of the issues to be sorted out because before it declaring is free and fair election. But yes, the NLD leader, Aung San Suu Kyi from prison requested from the government, requested from the people that they should vote for his part, for her party so that she can change, she can amend the constitution according to the will of the people, according to the need of the people. Okay. So, this is the reason. Aung San Suu Kyi sentenced for 33 years as I told you, 15,000 political worker opposing military rule in prison. It is also expecting the, and one more thing, that military is changing the voting, going to change the voting structure. Suppose, in India also, we are following the first pass the port system of election. Means, who received the more votes, he won the election, okay. But, what they are going to change, they are making, going to make the proportional representation system. So, this system, according to the uh, people of the Myanmar and the uh, political leaders, the proportional representation system will follow the structure or will be favorable for the army backing party, okay. So, they are also going to make this change and military duty in Myanmar also crush the aspiration of the freedom because people are elect, people have elected a party but army taken the control. So, they are fair that if we again elect the another party, army will again take the control, okay. So, for the free, free and uh, fair election, there should be the freedom of the people, there should be freedom of people to elect its representative, political prisoner should be free and election method should be fair enough to make the election free and fair, to make the democracy, democratic uh, fruit to reach the people, okay. Okay, now this is the end of the today's editorial analysis. Uh, you can visit the Madhyam IS website and physical center in Lucknow Aliganj also to take admission because the batch are running for the GS, for the UPSC and state PCS examination or UPPSC. So, the date also has been announced for both examinations. So, you should take immediately, uh, you should take admission very soon. And Madhya IS is providing the, uh, the students uh, authentic and very relevant material for UPSC examination. Okay, thank you. We will meet tomorrow for tomorrow's uh, editorial analysis. Okay, thank you.